Purdue as an undergrad and a professor since 1970. He will speak on a sense of place and what my sense of place means to me. Thanks. And I can't help but continue the conversation that I'm <laughs> just having with Larry. Uh, the idea that, it, it, let's say we were all vegetarians. I know that's quite a, a change for some of us. Let's suppose that we're all uh, vegetarians in this country. How many of the world's poor could we feed with our grain exports or with our food exports at that point? Um, yeah, sense of place. This paper is in the back, and it's also, uh, if you email me or look me up on the web, uh, look up my resume, resume, it's in the, you can download it from there if you want. It's also a very difficult thing for me to talk about. Usually I have slideshows and can speak extemporaneously, but this is a very personal dialogue, and um, so it's hard for me to, to uh, do, and I think you can be sympathetic with that. Um, it's uh, a long paper. Yes? Ah, <clears throat> a standard complaint with me, hard to hear. So please hold your uh, hand up to your ear as I'll correct it. I'll cor that doesn't help, yeah. That's for the recording, uh, for uh, recordifying, as George Bush would have said. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, bear with me. Hold your hands up to your ears, and I'll speak up. Um, the questions uh, are best framed uh, in this way by a quote from Scott Russell Sanders, who said, uh, people who root themselves in places are likelier to know and care for those places. When we cease to be migrants and become inhabitants, we might begin to pay enough heed and respect to where we are. By settling in, we have a chance of uh, making a durable home for ourselves, for our fellow creatures and our descendants. That's really the basis of my uh, philosophy, staying in one place, and uh, that wells wedge you to uh, the community and that sets you up for um, reacting to environmental degradation. And I noticed that my closest colleagues in this endeavor, Eric Freifogel and Clark Bullard, are like myself both products of the East Central Illinois and both active environmentalists. <clears throat> so let me state the questions that I'm trying to raise here. Surely one is formed by the community where one is raised by the people of that place and by their connection to the land. The smaller and more diverse that place is, and the more relatives around you, the more you come to know the place and its people. You come to understand yourself and them and to love them. You learn to grieve when they die, learn to grieve when the land is lost, and learn to become active when that loss is born of greed. In this process, you're woven into the community. Your mind is crisscrossed with patterns of work, of play, of achievements, and mistakes. As I grew older and went to the university and then to the army and finally to work in this area, I kept close touch with my nearby birthplace, though it grew harder and harder to know its many subtle changes. My memory of it did what memories do sifted out the painful and kept the joy. And these memories were elaborated into stories told many times to children, nephews, nieces, and eventually to grandchildren. Throughout it all, my underlying question, answered only with the death of uncles, aunts, and finally of parents, was this. <clears throat> was my attachment to this place, my deep sense of this place rooted in its history or its present? And was this strong sense coming through the people of the place or uh, through the landscape? In my years of environmental activity, now over 40, I realized that my growing concern for the local environment came from a deep association with this place and its people. I noticed that many of my close environmental colleagues were also of nearby places. Each seemed to understand that somehow the things we loved were dissolving before our eyes. This rate of dissolution had finally become fast enough that, when, that we could notice it within a decade, say, rather than over a generation or a lifetime. We realized first in theory and then in stark reality that the people we loved would someday be gone. Was this why we struggled so to keep the place from changing, degrading, as it was called by some, and progressing in the words of the proponents of change? 
We could not hold on to life, but we might hold on to place. And if we were lucky, set into motion the processes that would preserve the elements of nature around us here. In general, we were successful in defending the place from external forces. The dams proposed by the state and federal agencies, the landfills proposed by distant corporations, and the incinerators and coal plants proposed without pollution controls. But when we had to turn inward and face the farmers, the drainage districts, and the various parts of the massive structure of agribusiness, we were much less successful. We, when faced with our own, we seemed to fail. The farmers, too, have a sense of their place, both aesthetically and economically. How can we form a collective sense of place to build a sustainable agriculture, including local production of food, including preservation of the little towns along the great railroads that would nourish them and have nourished them, while restoring the nature that was once associated with them? As a member of the university, I see people come to our community, stay a few years, and then move on. I've tried over several decades to sort out those who could and would help in the effort to achieve a sustainable local environment. I've had limited success. I'm inclined to attribute these failures to their lack of a sense of this place. We are a nation of movers. Our labors seem to flow like waters across the landscape of the market and exchange. We're a nation of migrators. If we do not move across the country, we move across the city. How can we form a sense of place while we are so constantly on the move? And if we do not form a sense of place, can we, will we, defend it against destructive environmental forces? Can one learn a sense of place? Is there an educational process by which we stop chasing careers long enough to examine our place and with step-by-step -step instruction become woven into this newly recognized place? If we could do this, would the newfound ever-deepening connection help one hold to a place and begin to defend it? So that's my argument, basically. By staying in one place long enough to come to know it and love it, you become one of the potential people who will defend it against this uh, environmental slide that we all recognize. And, well, I'll mention the um, dedication that it takes to do that, but I also link that dedication to this deep uh, sense of place. <clears throat> 